What's the quickest you've noped out of a job? Story one, I went into an office for an interview. They said they had several positions available and I wanted to do some admin stuff. Welp, after the interview, they told me to get in a van to do the next part of the process. Turns out we drove an hour away so I could shadow one of their door-to-door -door salespeople. They would ask residents to go into their basement to check their hot water heaters to see if they were eligible to replace them with their company's own. I felt pretty uncomfortable about this and pretty pissed my whole day was gone doing this. The worst part was the girl I was shadowing spent half the day sitting around in the truck reading magazines and waiting for people to come home from work. I was sort of asking questions about the job and she got defensive and said, well, I decide if you get this job or not, to which I replied, yeah, I don't know if I want to do this. But she kept insisting that it was her who decided if I worked. Don't think she understood I meant that I didn't want to do this cow. Flipping waste of a day. Story 2. Found out that the educational assistance they touted in their advertisement applied only to full-time employees and that they both defined full-time as no fewer than 40 hours and kept anyone who would apply for that assistance from ever being qualified for it. None of this was advertised, and the people I interviewed with assured me, a college student, that working 21 hours a week would get me the benefits. Too bad I read my contract before signing it and called them out. Don't flipping lie to your employees, especially during an interview on something that can be easily and swiftly disproven. If you're willing to lie to me about this, what else are you willing to lie to me about? I did their training before being offered my contract, so I count it as having worked there, BTW. Story 3. Mine had to be when I was 18 and working at Blockbuster. I was helping the manager during the before open shift getting new items stocked on the shelves that came in that morning. My mom called me and told me that my dad was having a heart attack and she was panicking while waiting for the ambulance. Why did she call me at work to tell me this? The Blockbuster I worked at was in a strip mall type area behind my cul-de-sac. My house and the Blockbuster was separated by a small alley in a three minutes walk. I told my manager what was happening and asked if I could leave to help my mom while they waited for the ambulance. She said no. I just stood there looking at her thinking she couldn't be serious. I would be gone for all of 10 minutes and back helping her if needed. She stressed how important it was to get the things done that needed to be done. And I could only leave if I called around to the other workers and found someone to come in and cover for me while I was gone. I took off my name tag, slammed it on the counter and walked out. I never went back for any reason. For any who might wonder, my dad came out fine, was in the hospital for a few days. Story 4. I was interviewing for a contract position at a very small game development company, and they told me they were looking for someone to help finish up an existing project. Literally, the game looked like it was made in MS Paint, as if they had just hired some random guy off the street and asked them to make some art for them. Granted, it's a mobile game and sold for the standard 0.99, so maybe that's not the worst, but the game itself doesn't look engaging at all either. But I figure, worst comes to worst, I could make some money on the side with some low-effort work. Then they told me that my pay would be a percentage of the sales. Noped right out of that one. Story 5. Worked in a bakery. It was my first day, so I get there in the morning to meet everyone. Then they have me grease up baking trays for the others to fill. I lift up the first tray, and like 10, 15 cockroaches just scatter everywhere from under the tray. I tell the guy showing me the work that there were cockroaches, and he just shrugged. This was all in the back store. Customers were about 10 feet away. So I tell the guy that I'm not feeling too well after about an hour of doing that, and I head to the bathroom. When I came out, I told him I couldn't do that job, and he told me to get a real job then. So I left and gore myself a proper job. Story 6. Back in college, I used to work part-time as a nanny. One summer, I landed a really sweet-sounding 40-hour week, Monday, Friday, nannying job, looking after a baby and toddler. I was super excited about all the money I was going to make working that many hours. But the weird thing about this job was that the unemployed dad was also going to be at home with me. He was supposed to be spending all his time looking for a job, and I was watching after the kids while the wife was at work. Literally that first week, on day two or three, he starts hinting about his marriage problems and how his wife sleeps on the couch. The next day, he asks me to try out his fancy new massage chair. I reluctantly agreed, and he just stared at me while I laid on this vibrating chair and was like, oh yeah, nice. Great, thanks. He then offered to give me an actual massage sometime, and maybe I wouldn't mind giving him one too? On Friday afternoon, I went home, told me parents, who I was living with for the summer, everything, and my mom called the guy and told him I wasn't coming back the following Monday or ever. He then sent me a text saying he was disappointed in me, uh, and his poor wife. Story 7. It was my first day working for a family business that had just bought the equipment necessary to install underground fiber optic lines. They had previously been realtors but had read an article in an entrepreneur's magazine that said $1 mill year gross was common. They pulled their 14 and 17 wire old out of school to act as laborers, and the mom and dad were going to run separate crews. I was their first employee hire. 
As I was setting up my bore path, the mom told me we didn't need to expose an electrical line. We would just drill a few feet underneath it, and we didn't need to expose it. I told her that was ridiculous, reckless, and dangerous. The husband then came over and wanted to fight me for insulting his wife, and not 30 seconds into his tirade, the 14- and 17-year-old drilled directly into a large electrical line, which pops the transformer and sounds like an explosion. As I was walking away, the father went from wanting to fight me to chasing his 17-year-old around a retention pond. The mom was begging me not to leave. Nope. Story 8. I went to my orientation at a boot factory. They're government contracted and so pay minimum wage, so I figured I'd work there a while and look for something better. After we do the usual paperwork signing and such, we're taken as a group onto the factory floor for a tour. It's hot, it's crowded, it stinks, and everyone working looks annoyed by our presence. Okay, I guess not everyone loves their job, right? No biggie, I'm sure this won't be so bad. Then our guide informs us in no uncertain terms that our co-workers quite often give new people bad information to get them in trouble or make them mess up. They'd even be the ones to rat you out. Then we're told that our foreman is the type to yell for no reason, ask people if they're drunk in an accusatory way for no reason, and is generally a giant unpleasant person. I took a few moments to think after these last revelations, said, nah, and walked out of the building without a word to anyone. Walk that cow, Captain. I'm not putting up with all of that for eight bucks and some change an hour. Story 9. I work as a nanny. But when I first got into childcare, I was just babysitting. So it was my first night babysitting for this one family. Things went well, changed some diapers, put the baby to sleep, and that was about it. Parents come home and are very drunk. They asked me to stay for a little while after they got back, which was weird. Then they offered me, a 16-year-old at the time, a drink. Feeling a little pressured, I took it and just sipped on it. Then the mom got really close to me and says I probably shouldn't be driving home after having a drink. Once again, feeling a little pressured, I was thinking about acpeding. So I asked if I'd just be sleeping on the couch. I'll never forgot her next words to me. She says, oh no, honey. You'll be going to bed with us. I noped out of there so fast. I think I ran to my car, but it was kind of just a panicked blur. Left my purse there and everything. Story 10. I had a job in a salad plant. Those bags of salad mix a lot of restaurants' use. I was there for two weeks coring lettuce. In front of a conveyor belt, eight hours a day, pick up a head, slam it, pull the core, put it down, next. You talk to your co-workers or you plot the downfall of Western civilization. One really sweet lady had been there for ten years. Ten years on the lettuce line. She got called into the office and was gone for about half an hour. She said, I won't be here tomorrow. I got promoted. I asked what she'd be doing. Cabbage. I didn't quit. I wished her well, dropped my cow and walked out. I feel bad about not quitting, but I was young and, well, ten years. That was 28 years ago. Had I stayed, I might be up to carrots by now. I sometimes wonder how my life might be different had I stayed. And in those moments, I celebrate every decision I've ever made at it. When I say I didn't quit, I walked out. I didn't formally tell anyone I was leaving, and I provided no notice. I've never left any other job this way. Story 11. Was hired as an intern manager for a local non-profit recycling plant. This meant I would hire and train interns for this amazing work opportunity. Turns out for them, interns meant working for free, doing basically everything for the organization event and marketing-wise, while also cleaning the bathroom and taking out trash for the whole place every week. That's actually super illegal for being way too close for slave labor. I was on contract for minimum six months, but I managed to get out of it after two. I ain't risking my career for their shady business practices. Edit. While yes, it is legal for nonprofits to have unpaid interns and give them a level of responsibility, this place had no marketing or event planning staff and relied on interns to be able to do the jobs and have the quality of a professional. Besides always being hounded by the CEO that the interns who had no experience or training wasn't producing the same quality of work someone who's been in the industry for at least a few years, this does enter a gray area where even a full nonprofit may be protected. Story 12. Wanted something part-time when I was at uni, applied for at the local cinema chain, and got an interview. It was one of those high turnover places that meant if you got an interview, Thedri, was a 95% chance you got a job. Guy on the box office radioed to his manager and was told to take me to room 7. We got to room 7 and wait, and wait, and wait. About 25 minutes passed before the manager starts screaming abuse over the radio because we were not in room 2. So off to room 2, we go on the other side of the building, 15 screen cinema. The manager starts trying to turn on the charm, and I basically say if that's how you treat your employees in front of job candidate, there is no way I am ever working for you and ask the other guy to show me out. I'm sure it made no difference to his behavior, but it saved me a lot of potential abuse. Story 13. I once saw a Craigslist ad for a stereo salesman. 
I showed up to a warehouse where a bunch of dudes got into a minivan. The owner told me to go on a run and see how it is, and then talk about the job. Turns out all these guys did was lie and con. They would go up to strangers and say, Hey man, my cousin got this stereo, but he just got arrested and I don't need it. It's worth 500 but I'll gladly sell it for 200 Then use pushy tactics to get people to go to the ATM and give them money. The system was a piece of cow off-brand, and I overheard the owner saying in bulk it only cost him $20 to buy. Yeah, I noped out of this pretty quickly. I also called the police. This was in 2010. Story 14. It was a liquor store in a not-so-good part of town. Part of the orientation included advice on keeping the pervies away from the dirty magazines. If you don't, you'll find them jacking off back here. And how to use the shotgun by the register when, not IF, the store gets robbed. It's better if they're not around to tell their side of the story. Nope, eat it. It was a summer job when I was home from college. It paid min wage, $4, 25 har, I think. The rack where the prohibited photos mags were was visible from the counter. But the pervs would walk by the rack, grab one, and head for the back corner where they'd do their deed. I did not fire the shotgun as a part of the training, but I was and still am familiar with firearms. Story 15. Needed a part-time job for the summer, saw an ad on Craigslist for receptionist. Called, left a voicemail, got a call back for an interview, and was hired on the spot. It was for vector marketing. I wasn't selling knives because I was a receptionist, but I was calling people others had put down, which was usually everyone in their phone list who they hadn't talked to in years. The lady training me said to call the ghetto names first because they're usually home during the day. I quit after the first day. Story 16. I went to an interview right out of high school, and they made it seem so exciting, and mind you, I'm socially awkward. I'm not one to stand up and just piece the fudge out in the middle of something, and I'm not one to enjoy playing popcorn while reading. But when the supervisor brought out a box to show us how to put together a vacuum cleaner we'd be selling door-to-door, I noped the fuck out. I stood up, put my coat on, grabbed my keys, and said, no thank you, and left. I received probably ten phone calls that day asking if I'd come back. Story 17. Not sure if this counts, but it looks like a good majority of the replies on here revolve around noping out during the interview process. Had an interview at a large state correctional facility to be a nurse. I came with a sheet of paper full of questions and a pencil. I had a lot of questions to figure out whether the insane pay was worth my time. I was interviewed by a HR employee and some lady with a fancy title who wasn't even a nurse and was not even the manager of the nurses. I have no idea why she interviewed me. Once they were done interviewing me, I whipped out my long list and my pencil. I could see nervousness wash over their faces. They could hardly answer any of my questions. The answers they did give for some of my questions were mediocre. The only question they could answer with certainty was this one. Me. I have been told that the nurses can be mandated to work up to 24 hours. How often are nurses being mandated? HR. (laughs) Well, it's happening quite often. But that's why we are interviewing you. We are hoping to change that. That concluded my questions. I still had quite a few more, but after hearing that I was like, nope, the lady with the fancy title could see I had many more questions written down when I began to fold up my sheet of paper and put it away. She looked so defeated. The pair acted like they've never been questioned during an interview before, and maybe they hadn't. I would think any nurse interviewing at a prison would at least make a mental list of questions to ask. They offered me a job the following evening. Obviously, that was a big fat hell no. Story 18. I remember going for a marketing job interview. The interview was, I had to get on a bus with a group of other people who worked there and go to this really scummy council estate, UK, and knock on people's doors and ask them if they wanted to donate to charities and things. It was really, really odd. I was following this guy around for around half an hour while he got doors slammed on him over and over. I mentioned, man, the pay must be great if this is what you have to do all day. And he then told me he wasn't paid a penny. It was purely commission-based. Every person he signed up, he got like 50p. I just laughed and walked off. Edit my top comment on Reddit is about a poor job interview. Sorry to hear some of you have had similar situations. I hope you all are in better places now. Story 19. I was 22, living in NYC. Young and dumb and got an interview for a so-called job in finance. I was invited for the interview to a big fancy hall in a midtown hotel. There had to be a couple hundred people there. Well, the lights dim, the projector goes on, and third guy starts talking about money and money management. Then a single human icon appears on the screen. Then two under the single one. Then three under those two. It's a pyramid scheme. I walked right out. Fudge Primerica and they're hiding under the city umbrella logo. Edit. I had no idea Reddit hated MLM so much. Thanks for sharing your stories. Story 20. Was 19 and started work at a Lube Pros oil chain shop. Manager was a 24-year-old guy who, within the first hour of me working there, bragged about hanging around the trails near a local high school and beating up 14 and 15-year-olds for their money and candy. 
He also said that if I'm cleaning out a car and I find candy, or if I see pills, to take them and give it to him. He had a racket where he would steal illegal things from people's cars and threaten to call the cops if they didn't let him keep it. Left at the end of my shift, called the corporate number and quit, telling them everything this guy was doing. Drove by there the next morning and a cop was questioning him. The place closed a few months later. Edit. Thanks for the gold, kind stranger. Never thought my first gilded comment would be about the four hours I worked at a now-defunct oil change franchise almost two decades ago. Story 21. Sales rep for, for a medical supply company in 2004. It was advertised as a position where you would be filling orders and delivering product to existing customers. Then I went to the interview, the groupin, where they talked about how this great company had been successful for the last 30-some-odd years and how... Some of you lucky candidates will be joining our team and helping to grow our family of customers. This ended up being for on-site soliciting of medical gas, O2, N2O, etc., and accessories. They were hiring people to go to hospitals, doctor's offices, clinics, nursing homes, etc., to try to sell their product on commission only. I feigned an emergency phone call during the break and left, and they still called me back with an offer. I, as politely as I could, told them to pound sand. Story 22 applied for an office assistant position at 19 that paid $15 an hour. It was a bit farther away than I wanted to go, about half an hour, but I went anyways, showed up at the place, met with a woman who referred to it as an account manager job, and then told me I was supposed to meet with the regional manager at the regional office another half an hour away. I went to that interview, at which point it became apparent that they wanted me to sell Verizon Fios door-to-door -door in a shady area over an hour away from the initial advertised location, and that within a year, I could open my own branch in any city I wanted. Stayed for the free lunch they gave me, and then turned down the offer when the guy called. Said they pay all commission, but would pay a $20 daily stipend, which apparently equates to $15 per hour, to drive to the door-to-door -door sales job. Also, the guy interviewing me was probably less than five tall and claimed he was a belt in karate and all new hires would get karate lessons from him for self-defense while going door-to-door -door in a high-crime area. So yeah, nope. Story 23. I worked in a dairy barn for about three hours. I went to an agricultural college, and my roommate worked at the dairy. He said they needed equipment operators to clean out the barns. I thought, yeah, I can do that, thinking it would be four or five hours in the afternoon. This was during the summer, and I already had an eight-five job. I went to the dairy, and they showed me the skid steers and where I needed to scrape. After that, they showed me the milking parlor and everything else. I asked what time I might be done. They say 1 or 2 a.m. I said, yeah, no thanks. I called the dairy manager on my way out the door and told him it's not for me. Went to the bar and never looked back. My roommate still gives me cow for making him look bad. Sorry, Calvin. Story 24. After the first day, I was supposed to be a personal care assistant in a school for a child with behavioral issues. I was only given half of his IEP, which made him sound like a genius. The case manager only told me that he was a difficult case. I had no experience, was only trained via PowerPoints, and spoke with the case manager for two minutes, if that, before my first day. On my first day, I walked into the school, saw the case manager, and she dropped me off at the classroom without introducing me to anyone. She didn't even tell me the student's name. Throughout the day, I was bit three times, kicked countless times, spit on, cursed at, punched, you name it. I was clearly out of my comfort zone and competence level. At the end of the day, as I was getting him ready to get on the bus to go home, he peed all over the floor of the classroom. That was the final straw for me. Mostly, I was upset because important information had been withheld from me, and I felt the case manager was completely unprofessional. I realized that day that the public school system is failing its disabled students miserably. I wasn't trained nearly well enough, and I was passed off to a child who clearly needed more help than I could provide from someone much more experienced than I was. Story 25 Back in the 90s, I worked at a fast food restaurant to supplement my military income. I'll just say it was associated with a king. Lasted all of 30 minutes. During that time, I witnessed an employee puke into the sink, used for washing utensils without cleaning it out before it was used again. Then another employee dropped a cooked chicken patty on the nasty peach floor, picked it up, and put it on a bun to be served. At that point, I just walked out the door never to return. Never ate at another fast food place again as a result. I guess in a way, something good came of it. Edit. The educated guesses as to which king I may be referring have made my day. This is why I love this place. Thanks for the laughs. Story 26. A tutoring center. $11 an hour. And the tutors were expected to keep the place clean, including the bathroom. And I'd need to do a trial run for free despite my 12 years of experience as a tutor. $10 is minimum wage here, and I have a master's degree. 
If I'm going to be someone's janitor, I better making janitor pay and benefits. It's a hell of a lot more than $11 slash HRR. The real kicker is I quit my last part-time job at a similar after-school center because they sprung janitor duties on me a month in with a position that paid $1.14 an hour. The nerve of these business owners, hire a cleaning service, don't exploit your workers, eat it. I'd like to add that, yes, asking someone to clean as part of their job description is acceptable. But these hours rates are grossly low for a tutoring job. These centers charge $1.80 plus per student per hour, and often there's more than one student per tutor. So it's already exploitation to offer that little to a professional, and the idea of asking them to also clean bathrooms to earn their meager pay is even more of an insult. Story 27. I interviewed for a job as a morning show co-host in radio, and not only did they break down how I was allowed to dress, they flat out asked me if I'd ever posed for Playboy or done anything that could embarrass them. Now, I had never posed, but the fact that they were already dictating my off-air personal life made me walk away. My mother, a beautiful, non-cursing, graceful Southern woman, upon hearing this story simply said, you should have smiled and said, oh gosh, no, not Playboy. But does Hustler count? I miss my mom. Story 28. Had a corporation that needed serious IT infrastructure to be upgraded to qualify for a grant loan. Their networks and computers had to meet a security baseline to qualify. These were computers that were operating on Vista, XP, and 7 scattered throughout the 300-plus workstations coupled with shoddy networking, old STST fiber optic switches, cabling, etc. To meet the baseline, all workstations and servers had to have some sort of AV, all endpoints hardened, and Windows 10 Enterprise. To do that required a large amount of money, something that explaining to upper management and their resident CIO that this was important to meet this requirement. They shrugged it off and told me to do the best I can to meet the requirement and continue using the shoddy equipment, use bootleg copies of Windows 10, and whatever else to make it work. CIO. I guess never heard of a security audit that the other branches employ and would be disaster on me if I carried those out. I put in my two-week notice after countless times to explain in detail why the current methodology will never work and they will never receive their multi-million dollar grant. Story 29. Had an interview for a quite well-known chain e-cig shop in the UK. The interview took place in an actual basement with the area manager. 20 minutes was spent telling me how I do what I'm told, and that's it. Another 20 minutes on how the company wasn't in liquidation. Red flags all around at this point. After that, the guy literally threw a pen at me and said, try and sell me that. At this point, I just said, do you want a pen? No. Okay, bye. And walk about. Edit. I stopped smoking through vaping. I told this to him and that I'd love to help others do the same. His response was, we don't want helpers. We want sellers. Story 30. Not exactly a job, but I noped out of joining a rugby team after just two hours. The coach gathered the team after practice and said, Team bonding competition this weekend. Sounds cool, right? Here's the contest. Find the oldest woman possible. You have to get her age by seeing her ID. You must then make it as far to home plate as you can and produce team eyewitness, as in your teammate is in the room as it happens, photo or video evidence. Winner is the one who has the best balance of old age, nearness to home, and solid evidence. The flipping coach put them up to this. Not the players, the coach. No thanks. I like not being in prison and off the registry. Any rugby fans in the Midwest of the U.S.? Steer clear of the Grand Rapids Gazelles men's team. The same coach is still there. This team has a long-standing reputation for doing stupid cow like this. Story 31. I transferred to a different steak and shake when I moved. I worked there for two weeks before quitting. Not only were they disgusting, but a few weeks earlier, the town had flood. During a shift I was working. Damage from the flood caused sewage to rise up from the floor drains, causing about two inches of sewer water to sit on the floor. They didn't close down the store. Instead, we made food while walking through sewer water. It smelled horrible, and I can't imagine how unsanitary it was. I called the health department, and they got in trouble. I witnessed the big boss come in and talk to the manager. After that, I never returned. Story 32. Was looking for a sporadic part-time job. Applied at this little catering company that had been around for a while. Showed up for the interview and realized that a rich guy had bought it two weeks earlier for his wife to have a hobby. They fired everyone and hired friends' kids to help out. I was literally the only one with cooking or hospitality experience. They get me to help out for a few hours to see if they like me. We get along and there are a couple red flags, but the pay is about 50% higher than the going rate. We agree to meet on the Sunday to finish up prep for the week and get everything sorted for my role. Show up 15 minutes early and nobody is there. I waited 30 minutes and said, fudge it since I literally just started incident have her number, but she had mine. She calls the next day at 8 a.m. demanding I don't go to my regular job and get in there to help her out since she waited an hour for me. I told her I was there at 2 and waited. 
She then explodes, saying that she owns the business and was with her husband at brunch, so it would have been rude to step out to call me. Then she goes full Amy's baking company on me, goes off on how she fired everyone because these cooks think they knew better than her, but she goes out and eats all the time. How she knows more about restaurants than anyone in the city, and how as a grateful employee, I should have sat and waited for her to finish her very important brunch. I ended up hanging upon her. They were closed within three more weeks. Seems she knew so much about restaurants, she forgot that to own a food service business, you need a food handling certificate and at least one person with certification. Story 33. First day at work in a care home for young adults with various learning difficulties, I'm being shown round and introduced to the clients by my immediate superior. We get to the room of a young guy, 19, severe autism and a couple of other issues, and she tells me that this guy is difficult, but they have a great way of dealing with him that ensures he behaves for a few days. Any bad behavior from him is dealt with by going to the supply closet, getting out the brown parcel tape, putting it on his arms and legs, and then ripping it off as fast as possible in order to pull out as many arm and leg hairs as I could. I was also told not to worry about restraining him, as there was always someone working who would be able to help me hold him down. I noped the fudge out of there as soon as we left his room and went straight to the local authority, who gave no about the situation. The company was brought out a few months later, and the majority of the staff got fired, so I hope he's being looked after by better people now. Story 34. Oh boy, I've been waiting to tell this one. I got this job working for UPS last year, and long story short, I quit before even getting to work. Before going, I heard how poorly they treated the workers, but I didn't expect it to be that bad. When I showed up for the interview, the interviewer was late, by an hour. When she finally showed up, she gave everyone a tour of the building. The workers looked like they were about to collapse, it was that hot in room. And the entire time we were there, she was screaming at the employees for not working hard enough, even though they were moving like machines. Once that was over, they told me to go buy work boots and sign a waiver. She then said to come back next Tuesday for my first day. When I got there that day, the first thing she told me was to go home because they hired too many people and didn't expect everyone they hired to show up on the day she told us to show up. So again, they said to come in next Tuesday. When I showed up, I was told that I wasn't going to be paid for the day because, according to them, I didn't show up the week before. So I said fudge it and quit. All that for $9 an hour. Fudge that. Oh, and the only thing in the break room was a vending machine that was specially priced. $5 for a Kit Kat conclusion. Fudge UPS. They're a bunch of cheap, greedy, lying asshats. Story 35. Was laid off from my job of 12.5 years as a graphic designer for a firm in the D.C. area. Started looking and got a lead on a contract position for some random company in the area. Spoke to a recruiter over the phone, and everything sounded great. Specifics of the designer job and details sounded on par to what I was interested in. We set up an interview. I show up and the receptionist seats me in their oddly large waiting room. Many chairs. As I wait, more and more folks come in and sit. I start to get suspicious. Shortly, two sharp-dressed, cool-talking hip bro dudes burst in and introduce themselves to everyone in the waiting room, asking us to all come into the conference room for a little intro video. Now I'm really puzzled. The conference room fills up. It's just a large room with many chairs all facing a screen with a projector in the center on a table. The bro dudes come up front and do a little spiel on how cool the company is and that we're now going to enjoy a video. Lights go down, video starts playing. Turns out it's a company that sells benefits packages to law enforcement and public safety groups. The video makes it look like you work for a fraternity, sorority with parties. Hip young folks getting lots of money and having lots of fun. Reminds me of Ren Home Industries. That's the sort of place this is, Jen. A lot of alluring people not doing much work and having affairs. I stood up and walked out after about 10 minutes into the video. As I did, the bro dudes paused the video and called me out in front of the group. They were prepared for this. Where are you going? I'm leaving. Why? Because I'm leaving. They continued to ridicule me and told me I was making a mistake. I told them that they had just flat out lied to me on the phone and laughed as I walked out the door. Fudge companies that bait and switch you like that in particular. I learned a good lesson that day. Story 36. Took a job at a big lots to unload the truck in the morning. I thought it was the perfect job as it would give me time to get some money before my classes started. Turns out the manager lied about pretty much every aspect related to time and job. Said unloading truck was a four-hour job. Took us six. Once the truck was unloaded, I was ready to leave, but apparently we were supposed to stock shelves now. No mention had ever been made of this, but I was there for another three hours. Luckily, on that first day, I had no classes, so I didn't miss anything, but I didn't return for the second. Not only did the manager lie, but it was an absolutely miserable work environment. Was incredibly hot, incredibly disorganized, and the manager insisted on blasting really loud music on really poor speakers, so I developed a headache really quickly. Story 37. 
When I was about 21 years old, I was looking for a summer job to help out with college. I found what seemed to be a great opportunity on Craigslist for a part-time job as a sort of driver. Basically, this guy living in Florida was looking for someone to drive his mom, who lived in Chicago, around a couple of days a week. I had a car and didn't mind driving, so this seemed like a pretty sweet gig. We exchanged emails for a bit before I had a call with him. During this, he starts bringing up about how his mom actually want to use her car, which he would need to ship up from Florida. Then he starts going on about a money order and how I will be reimbursed in my first check. And that's when I was like, nope, sorry, not falling for that and said goodbye. I learned that day that if a job on Craigslist seems too good to be true, it probably is. Story 38. Mine was during the interview. They asked how I deal with difficult coworkers. Fair enough, as almost every job has people with personalities. I give a solid answer and I think that's that, but they go deeper. What if they get angry a lot? What if they yell? What if they are lightly violent and throw stuff and have temper tantrums? At this point, alarms are going off in my head. They clearly have someone who has knowledge they can't fire, but they can't get people to stay long enough to replace. They offered me the job at the end of the interview, but I noped out. Story 39. As a programmer, you get to know people who left before you started by the code they left behind. You see weird, crappy code, do a git blame to see who's the person that can explain that mess to you, and you discover it's somebody who no longer works there. Do it enough times and you start to remember their name. After a while, I was job hunting and I, after a job interview, I met the guy who interviewed me, turned out to be the guy whose code has given me endless headaches over the past years. I don't like judging people for their old code, but I decided to try my luck somewhere else instead. Story 40. When I was 16, I was recruited for a door-to-door -door newspaper subscription sales job by a guy I met in a mall parking lot. A promising start, right? That wasn't the deal breaker. I met him again the next afternoon and he took me and a few other new recruits to a housing development in his van. Along the way, he talked practically nonstop and was extremely enthusiastic about the position, like, suspiciously so. In retrospect, he'd probably been hitting the Florida snow beforehand. That wasn't the deal breaker. When my new co-workers could get a word in edgewise, I learned that one of them believed aliens were beaming mind control signals that could be blocked by literal tinfoil hats. Well, aluminum foil. And while the rest didn't share his zeal on the matter, they all seemed to find it plausible. That wasn't the deal breaker. Fortunately, I didn't end up working with any of those fine specimens of humanity. The buzzed boss dropped us all off at different parts of the housing complex, and I canvassed houses on a dreary November day. Over the course of four or five hours, I only managed to sell one daily subscription to a family with deaf parents. The children translated my pitch into signing, and two Sunday-only ones to a pregnant woman whose dog kept trying to force its way past her to jump on me and to a very furtive woman with two eyes. That wasn't the deal breaker. When the van picked me back up in the evening, I gave the completed subscription forms to the boss. He explained that no matter what option people chose, he signed everyone up for the daily option. Once they noticed they were receiving and being charged for a paper every day, it would be up to them to call the newspaper and deal with the customer retention team to downgrade their subscriptions if they could. He laughed about difficult the newspaper made it to change a subscription. That was the deal breaker. I forget exactly how I quit, but I remember it was in the van with the tinfoil hatter and other soon-to-be former colleagues. I think the shady AF boss asked if I'd be available the next day, and I told him that I wouldn't be coming back. He went off on a tirade about how I was passing up a golden opportunity. Would never amount to anything, blah blah blah. I do remember that he ended it with, There are two types of people in this world, winners and losers. Which one are you? I replied. Whichever type you are, I'm the other one, and got out of the van. I'm still proud of my teenage self for that one. Story 41. I went to an interview at a car dealership, and the first time I was there was kind of like the screening process to screen applicants for what I thought was an admin office position from Indeed. The guy who talked to all of us on that first day was a self-proclaimed big deal in the industry as far as training and overall success goes, 70-ish-year-old male, and started hitting on me in a group of 10 people almost immediately. Against my better judgment, I came back when I was called for the second day which was the day everyone from previous screenings kind of came together. He started with this presentation about how the car industry worked and how there was a metric ton of money to be made. Which isn't wrong, but I was misled as far as what, if any legitimate salaried position was available. He then told us that the owner of the franchise was going to be interviewing everyone individually and that we should all study up on what he'd just taught. There were 30 of us, and we had already sat through an approximately two-hour presentation about something we didn't want in a 75-plus room in Flipping July. I waited around for maybe two people to go in and leave after their interview, unbelievably another hour and 15 minutes, and then just left. It was on my day off, 
and I had already wasted enough time on these people who clearly had no consideration for any of us. It was brutal. So much nope. Story 42. Went into work night shift. I was told I would be made management after six months and was supposed to be trained by the night shift manager as he was retiring. Said manager looks at me and says, You've had retail experience before? Me. Yes, him. Okay, great. Here are the codes to do anything you need to with the register. I'm not supposed to give them to you, but here they are. Don't call me for anything or I will fire you. Go use the bathroom right now and I'll be back to relieve you in two hours. The night shift manager was about 30, which I found really strange as how the fudge would he be retiring. So I asked him, are you retiring? After coming back from the bathroom, he looked directly at me and said, no. They tell everyone that to get people on night shift. I looked at him and said, they shouldn't lie. He replied, why not? We need people. Almost laughing, I said, here's why. I proceeded to walk straight out the front door saying, I quit. Story 43. Not really that quick of a nope out of a job, but I've only had three jobs in my life and this still pisses me off to this day. I signed up to Melio's to work as a delivery driver. My parents said to get a second job and I said I could do deliveries. And since it was their car, I felt that I had to go through them to see what they thought of the idea. They were okay with it, so I decided to try for the job. I get there and this sweet old lady manager sits there with me while I'm filling out the employment form. She asks about the hours I'll want, how the job will be, and just generally chatting and whatever. I was going to be paid $2 less an hour, but she said that tips would make up for the wage drop. My parents said similar, so I figured, fudge it, I'll take a chance. I start working a week later after everything went through and I come into work on my first day. Immediately, I'm asked to take orders for people at front counter. I say that I was hired as a driver and they said they can't really pay me to just sit around all day so I should be working. Immediately, I start thinking about how weird it is. They barely teach me how to take orders. The few people working there just sort were like, dude, take his order. And I had to say that I didn't know how to do that. They really didn't know how to train people and it was very, very obvious from the get-go. They constantly just assumed I knew things or that I would just understand eventually. Once I got my first delivery for the day, I booked it and just got through the order as quick as I could. It was nice, not gonna lie. Pretty nice job and I got a $5 tip so it was sort of worth it, I guess. The moment I got back, they asked me to start sweeping around the place and to wipe down the tables. I remark again that I was hired to drive and the manager replies with the same thing as before. We can't pay you to stand around and do nothing. I figure, all right, whatever. I sweep up and they send me home after, I would say, maybe three or four hours. The next three or four days were similar. A few hours of work and only one order per day. The money was not adding up and on the final day I worked there, they told me to make sandwiches. I told them I've never done that and that, oh, but you work at big restaurant chains, so you'll be all right. Neglecting that I've never even touched any of the food. I immediately have no idea what to do and they explain nothing. I'm supposed to be putting meat on sandwiches and sauces on the sandwich buns, but nothing is labeled at all. I keep asking them for help and one of them straight up just says, dude, I'm kind of busy right now. One of the customers makes jokes and stuff. First day? Ha ha ha, it's fine, man, to ease it a little bit, but I'm getting more and more angry since they actually don't even bother training me or anything. They just shove me into making sandwiches and expect me to know everything. We get through the small 20-minute rush and one of the staff tells me to start washing lettuce in the back. At this point, I decided I'm going to quit and I'm just trying to find the quickest way to. A regional manager comes in and starts talking with the manager. I get finished with the lettuce and I talk with her about my employment. I tell her that I was hired to be a delivery driver and that I was not doing that while being paid dollar two less an hour. The numbers weren't adding up and I honestly did not believe this job was worth my time or for me at all. She said it was fine and that I would be taken off the schedule and be sent a check for the time spent working. Never got the check. Don't even care. I hated that I had to do the same work as everyone else around me and be paid $2 less an hour. The money was not worth it at all, but the staff was all right, if a little awkward since they were all still in school and I wasn't. I'm a dropout. Sue me. They just could not train people for cow and seemed to have no ability to understand that new people don't know cow.